första föredragshåller ut är er Prabjot Kor. Hon har er stipendiat vid universitetet i Sörnöst Norge och är er också ansatt vid Nationell kompetens för samtidig rusmissbruk och psykisk lidelse vid Sykehuset Innlandet. Hon blir vägledd av Henning Pettersson som är er ansatt vid Högskolan i Innlandet och som också jobbar vid Nationell kompetens Prabjot skriver om immigrationshälsa och vi är er så heldiga att få höra lite grann om hennes erfarenheter och det hon har uppdagat i sin forskning hittills. Varsågod Prabjot, ord är er ditt. Okej. Okay. Um, I am going to talk about my PhD project uh, that uh, I started in January 2018 and it is about it is a qualitative study and it is about uh, the experiences of uh, immigrants who have been diagnosed with uh, substance abuse disorders and mental health disorders at the same time so it means they are co-occurring so the background for the study is that uh, we already know that immigrants uh, are vulnerable because they have a uh, different cultural and ethnic background and also because they have um, been influenced by various pre-migration and post-migration factors and also uh, it has been shown in the previous studies that those who have been diagnosed with uh, co-occurring substance use and mental health disorders are uh, difficult to treat are difficult to get help uh, within the mental health and addiction services and uh, because of various factors uh, so um, the, and also in addition many studies have shown that uh, there is under utilization of mental health services uh, among uh, immigrants and this has been done re- uh, recently uh, by one of our colleagues Lash Leon and uh, Abibi and also, they have said that the prevalence of mental health and substance use disorders are three times higher in the immigrants in Norway as compared to the general population. And in addition, there is also a higher dropout rate. That is that they do not uh, uh, complete the treatment and the treatment engagement between the uh, immigrants who have been diagnosed with co-occurring disorders is, uh, uh, is not complete. So also there, um, and the, on the other hand, if we talk about the health professionals, they uh, lack the knowledge about the immigrant backgrounds and that leads to the uh, uh, dissatisfaction within the treatment uh, by the immigrants. So what happened to the immigrants when all these factors play a role within the treatment? So they, they, were, they are already struggling with the acculturative stress that they have uh, because of various factors of pre-migration and post-migration factors and coming from their uh, own land to Norway. And the various uh, studies have been done in Sweden, in Netherlands, in Denmark, and they have said that uh, the immigrants are more li- likely to use substance abuse uh, in order to cope with their conditions. And um, also they have experienced more mental health disorders as compared to the native population. So, and in addition, there are also lack of policies that, uh, and uh, lack of resources that target this group. So uh, this become, and, and we also know that immigrants contribute to the 18% of Norwegian population. So it's a um, huge number. So there is, uh, so there's a ra- rationale to focus on this group uh, and, and to avoid the and to reduce the burden of the disease on the Norwegian healthcare. So we have this aim that we wanted to explore the coping and treatment experiences of immigrants who have uh, co-occurring disorders. So uh, so what we did is we conducted the qualitative in-depth interviews with the individual and we had, uh, uh, and that was quite challenging and we were able to recruit only 10 immigrants in the period of nine months. And uh, the recruitment was uh, more than half of the um, uh, participants were uh, uh, recruited because of the help of 
the user group that we had and the user group was the key in the recruitment and it also helped us during the all stages of the process so we have three members in this user group uh, two of the previous users who had this who had been diagnosed with co-occurring disorders and uh, also they have the experience of getting treatment in norwegian mental health and addiction services and one of them were the relative of the user so we had this um, uh, 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 regular meetings with the user group and since they had this different position within their community and they were well known faces so it was easy for the participants to trust them and only because of that i think i was able to recruit 6 out of uh, 10 participants with the help of the user group and the remaining four we uh, sent the invitation letters to the various uh, rehabilitation centers um and uh, and i think we were able to recruit one from them and then we did some snowballing and were able to recruit rest of the participants so the yeah the recruitment part was very challenging uh, especially with the immigrants and i think they were like hard to reach group uh, because of the trust issues as well so um, so the design was a uh, qualitative uh, collaborative study and uh, um uh, also uh, this study was conducted into two subgroups one study that focused on the perception and experiences of the immigrants what happens to the immigrants when they have uh, co-occurring disorders and uh, when they get the treatment in norwegian ment- mental health care and addiction services and, and on this and the second subgroup of the study is with the health personnel uh who have the experience of working with uh, immigrants and uh, m- uh, mainly we look into the factors that can facilitate and have and those were the barriers to the treatment from both side of the picture from the immigrants as well and from the health professionals as well um so we have uh, three articles based on these 10 interviews and we did three focus group with the health professionals and uh, the three focus groups conducted were from drum uh, from one of the commune and also from one of the uh, spe- uh, center that is specialized in treating mental health and uh, addiction services and the third one is one of the fact teams so we did three focus groups uh, with the health professionals um so uh, i will talk according uh, to the three articles that we wrote about the results what we found uh, with the first article we uh, try to look into the uh, coping experiences of immigrants like uh, or like uh, like how they cope up being an immigrant with having co-occurring disorders in norway so how 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 they have these the lived experiences of being an immigrant in norway plus having the co-occurring disorders as well so that was a double challenge for them in norway and they have to uh, cope and negotiate their uh, sense of self within themselves within the society and within the struct- uh, within their cul- within their own culture and also within uh, the structures of the society so uh with the uh, when they have to cope within their themselves then they have these issues of uh, inner conflict like they were uh, most uh, most importantly it was about uh, the cultural clash they had to face um actually the uh, i didn't mention earlier that the participants were from non western countries and all, all the 10 of them that was our inclusion criteria uh so the participant have these challenges of uh, cultural uh, issues when they came to norway and most of them they came to norway like at very young age before 8 or 8 to 10 years of age and most of them started using substances in norway um uh, and they started using substances between i think 12 to 20 20 years of age and the participants were from the age group of uh, 25 till 53 yeah okay and then uh, the cultural clash 
coming back to the cultural clash they faced and uh, it was difficult for them to handle their own culture uh, at their own place and when they come to the schools or universities it was difficult to manage with the norwegian culture so there was a cultural clash and they were not able to identify themselves either with their own culture or with the norwegian culture and what happened uh, because of that is they uh they lost their uh, sense of self that they were not able to recognize themselves as uh, with their own culture and also with the norwegian culture and also uh, with the uh, when they it was come to coping and negotiating within their culture uh, have using substances and uh, having mental disorders is quite stigmatized in because and in addition they have very small communities in uh, norway and they had this fear of uh, 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 they have this fear of getting recognized using uh, substances else somewhere so they um, uh, they had this uh, fear of stigma stigma all the time that they might not be recognized within their community and uh, they also have some have problems based on this with their own family so they have no uh, most of the participants lack the support from their family as well uh, and most of the participants did not tell their parents that they are using substances or they want treatment so one of the very significant finding that came is the uh, was that they are living a double life and which is extremely exhausting that means that uh, uh, the example they gave is like they tell their family that they are going out for a tour for an year or so and they don't want to be contacted and they just want to explore themselves but when the reality is that they go to the treatment services and get treated so the burden of uh, being else uh, some uh, having a different uh, sense of self in front of their family and and having the sense of self with, with their own self was uh, very difficult to cope for them and uh, uh, the another finding was uh, uh, with uh, within the structures of the society they have faced few experiences of uh, discrimination uh, and uh, they think that they are not being cared uh, being taken care of Uh, well as their norwegian counterparts and this has also reduced their um, treatment taking uh, uh, pattern so th- uh, this is one of the reasons that they didn't want to continue the treatment and get back to the uh, get back to the to the place where they are not being uh, just based on their immigrant background and based on their Uh, on the disorders they have so this is uh, one of the thing that was very prevalent that they did not have the trust on the system and they especially mentioned about uh, child health care services and because some of them have the kids and they have always this fear that their kid might be taken away from them so this uh, living with all these uh, different conditions and lack of tr- trust within the system added on to them of uh, choosing not to get the treatment and 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 this is how the uh, the treatment engagement decreased uh, decreased in them and yeah that was the part where we explored the, uh, the immigrants the uh, the experiences of being an immigrant and the experiences of uh, having co-occurring disorders in norway how how do they feel with that and coming up to the second article when we because our research was treatment focused for what happens to them when they come to the treatment and we wanted to know the reasons why they do not complete the treatment <clears throat> and why they have this low engagement with the treatment so the uh, the uh, our theme uh, our aim for the second article was to uh, know the treatment experiences of immigrants who have co-occurring disorders uh, and how they have experienced within the norwegian mental health care and addiction uh, services 
so when we were analyzing the data so we came across two type of experiences one were the positive experiences and the another were the negative experiences that they had so uh, we uh, when talking about the negative experiences they felt that they have this lack of connection with the healthcare services and when they come into the healthcare services uh, which means that uh, they felt that they are not being asked the right questions and uh, it was also important to ask about uh, um i it was also important to ask what happened why have they initiated the substances and how their cultural background has shaped up their substance use uh, have uh, along the way and all they have also mentioned that uh, they were dissatisfied with the treatment because they feel that the treatment they have was a conventional treatment and that was not tailored to their needs and and also some of the participants mentioned that they have this uh, they were in the group treatment which uh, uh, which is standard treatment at some of the uh, facilities so they mentioned that they are being placed in the group that are really odd for them for example if if they he is he was 30 and then he was placed in a group where they have the persons who are 60 years old or who is 45 years old or whose substance abuse is long term or um, or who is for forced to get into the treatment so all these factors also influence their treatment uh, engagement within the mental health and addiction services so, uh, and they also mentioned that one of the incident was that uh, that like really stuck with me when one of the participant he said told me that when he went into the health services and one of the questions her his psychologist asked was like um, uh, was he violent and he was really disappointed with that question and then he just left the treatment within 2 minutes and he went back on the gatha and he shopped uh, heroin and then he thought that there he cannot get any help uh, even from the treatment facility so this was one of the incident that was uh, that stuck with me when i was interviewing the participants so i think it's very important that the healthcare person should should uh, should focus on the immigrant's background and should ask them appropriate questions that they don't feel that they are being neglected within the system or they are being discrimin uh, they uh, or that they feel that they are being discriminated against and also the um, third negative experience they were were obviously because of the stigma that they were facing and also the discriminatory experiences within the healthcare system that i just mentioned and and along with the negative experiences some of them also have these positive experiences uh, with the treatment and uh, uh, and it was the health professionals who have multicultural competence and some of the participants mentioned that there are some there were some healthcare professionals who have these uh, multicultural competence and uh, they were able to ask the right questions and they were able to help because they knew uh, a, a bit about their background and how how that can shape the treatment engagement between Uh, between the immigrant and the health professional and it also helped in building the trust relationship uh, between them also and uh, uh, some of the participants also mentioned about the uh, uh, care after the after when the treatment finishes so at the one uh, they most of them they said that when they are in the treatment they know what they have to do uh, they are being to they have this schedule like for uh, whenever they are in treatment for 9 months or 12 months they get into the schedule and when their treatment finishes they get out of the treatment and then it's a black space for them and they are not being followed up after the treatment and they they do not have any schedule and they don't know then what to do and most likely what happens is that when they don't know what they have to do they fell into relapses so one of the factor that uh that was important is the follow up after the after the treatment like they are being contacted and asked like how are they doing so that also helps them to increase the treatment engagement
and the third factor was uh, some of them mentioned was the raising the awareness and reducing the stigma with, uh, uh, within the Norwegian communities and also within their own uh, small communities that are in the Norway that to have affected their life in in Norway. So we're now coming to the last article where we uh, talked about the health professionals since we wanted to have the holistic picture of the phenomena, what is happening with the immigrants and why it is happening and what is happening with the health professionals and why it is happening. So we conducted three focus groups as I mentioned earlier with three different health facilities. And uh, uh, we wanted to know that uh, we wanted to know how they have experienced this treatment engagement uh, of working with uh, immigrants who have co-occurring disorders. So what we did, uh, what we found here that uh, the health professionals who were the participants of the study, uh, they mentioned about uh, the factors that were uh, barriers to the treatment and also the factors that facilitated the treatment. So the major difficulties the health professional faced and also they mentioned that uh, immigrant faced were due to the language barriers. Some, um, uh, some of the immigrants who do not have good uh, command on the Norwegian language, uh, they, uh, they, they do not, they are not able to get into the treatments that are available. For example, a group therapy, which is run mostly in uh, Norwegian within one of the specialized centers that we talked with. So they, they had this uh, standard for the treatment. Uh, and since the immigrants who do not have good Norwegian command cannot be, uh, uh, cannot be, uh, uh, they cannot join the group treatment because they won't understand the therapy. And also they mentioned that uh, uh, about the interpreters a lot. Uh, they mentioned that uh, the it is difficult to get into contact with the one uh, interpreter with one uh, patient in many sessions. So with each session they get a new interpreter which creates the trust issues between the patient and them. So seeing a new interpreter at every session, the participant is likely to have low trust and he, then they have to build the relationship from the beginning. So uh, what they have to, so th that was one of the challenges. Another challenges were that the interpreters, they do not have the enough uh, professional competence of interpreting because they did not know, uh, might not know the uh, background about the immigrants and plus they might not know the background about the co-occurring disorders. So they were not able to translate uh, 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 the thing, uh, translate the things between the patient of with the immigrant background and within the health personnel. So there were a lot of uh, trust issues that were caused because of the language barriers. And also have, it was also mentioned that um, Interpreter services are uh, very costly in Norway, and the, most of the health professionals were uh, like discouraged to, uh, to to use interpreters when, and they were only asked to use the interpreters when it is most necessary. Uh, so that was also one of the barriers with the treatment. Uh, and another barrier was that uh, the lack of cultural sensitive approach and uh, resources within the treatment. So they did, they did not have the resources where they can get the training for uh, attaining the cultural competence for uh, where, they can, uh, we can, where they can know about the uh, cult cultural background of the immigrant and also uh, where they can know what is the right question to ask. So there were lack of resources within them. And also some of the participants mentioned that uh, having to deal with the patient who has the immigrant background is double the work. Uh, it take a lot of efforts uh, and um, some of them, they did not want to work extra hours because of that, because that's an, th that was an extra effort working with the patient who do not understand Norwegian. And also, uh, yeah. And, some, and they also mentioned about the difficulties that 
and the immigrant space where, with the treatment engagement were because of the social factors where they live and uh, for example if they mentioned if uh, they they live in an area which is immigrant uh, specific area and uh, where they have child where they, there are children who are living in that area where, where persons are using substances at the one place and one place the uh, children are playing so it's about the infrastructure that also affects the immigrant up up growing in there and that will usually not happen in a area which is now region specific so that also affects their uh, uh, coping up uh, uh, with, within norwegian context and some of the facilitators that uh, help the participants that helps the health professionals to uh, with the treatment engagement among immigrants were they uh, they were being curious and it was very independent of the health professionals like it was their own efforts they wanted to help the uh, help help the participants and they wanted to have better relationships so they went and study on their own uh, about the different topics and and ask them the questions uh, and ask them the right questions and uh, to build a connection between them and uh, and the participants uh, and the immigrants who have these co-occurring disorders and the another uh, fact facilitator to the treatment was that making these mental health services and uh, addiction services available to the participants so this is how facts team that works that is like it's very mobile it can go to the places where the participant wants and uh, and uh, and then, then the participants know that it's reachable for example they can talk in the park and uh, in the place where the participant is comfortable so that that was the facilitator uh, for the treatment engagement that's what the participants mentioned so uh, yeah that that is our uh, findings from three different uh, studies so i hope uh, something would come out of it and some uh, more specifically i would uh, like to inform that there is the need of understanding the cultural uh, background of immigrants who are in the treatment and it's very important to have the resources it's not only uh the it's uh, sometimes health professionals don't want to uh, have the competence but some some of them they want to have the cultural competence to deal with the patients they say that uh, sometimes they don't know what should i do with this patient and how do i approach with the, the, with the treatment with this patient so it's very important that they get the resources they get uh, the trainings they should have specific materials to understand and there should be some standardized treatment uh, approach uh, with the cultural competence within um when it comes to treating the uh, immigrants with the co-occurring disorders so that their needs are met and they complete the treatment and have an increased treatment engagement within uh, uh, within their uh, treatment program so i think this will benefit the norwegian society as a whole as i already mentioned because the immigrant population is growing in norway and there is no sign that it will decrease continue it is going to increase in the coming years so it's important so it's important to focus on this group as well yeah yeah det är Henning Pettersen jag är sjuksköterska och första gången mensis vid högskolan i Lillehammer på Lillehammer och jag har också varit har den förnöjelse att vara Brabjot sin huvudvägledare på hennes doktorgradsprojekt men jag ska snacka lite mer generellt om på norsk om eh samtidigt är rus och psykisk lidelse och eh, det blir slinka upp mot eh, personer med invandrande bakgrund. Vi vet att personer med allvarlig psykisk lidelse är mer tillgängliga att bruka rusmedel än andra. Och att många av dessa utvecklar rusavhängighet. Faktiskt upp mot 60 till 70 procent av dem alltså av de med psykisk lidelse. Men det är ju klart för sig att hos personer med lättare psykiska lidelser så är vi inte lika hög förekomst av rusavhängighet. Sammanhangen mellan den psykiska lidelsen och ruslidelsen kan tänkas ha betydning för hur den personen med dessa lidelser bör behandlas. Ruser man sig för att dämpa plågor av ett symptom på en psykisk lidelse, alltså sin medicinering, eller uttrycker man angst och depression 
Also wir hätten da langweilige Lösungsbild. Er det en gjensidig påvirkning, det vil si utvikler du angst av å drikke, og så drikker du for å bøte på angsten, ha på en god sirkel. Eller kan det tenkes felles årsaker til begge lidelser. Men det er ingen enighet om årsaksforhold og hva som forårsaker det ene eller andre her, men det er forskningen som viser at den beste forklaringen antageligvis er at det er en eller flere felles faktorer som årsaker begge typer lidelser. Sånn som for eksempel traumer eller tilknytningsforstyrrelser. For mennesker med og uten alvorlig psykisk lidelse har rusen gjerne flere ansikter. De fleste opplever motstridende følelser knyttet til bruk av rusmidler. Mange ser ut til å ha nytte av rusmidler på kort sikt, men opplever problemer i et lengre perspektiv. Samtidig opplever mange at de har blitt rusfri, og så kan være både besværlig og konflikter. Behandling foregår gjerne i psykisk helsevern eller i tverrfaglig spesialisert rusbehandling, altså innen spesialisthelsetjenesten. Utfordringen er imidlertid at mange ikke får god nok behandling fordi man i psykisk helsevern ikke vil behandle personer med rusavhengighet, og innen rusbehandling er man nølende til å ta inn personer med psykostyrelse. Det resulterer i at mange ikke får optimal behandling. Nyere forskning har vist at integrert behandling av rus og psykisk lidelse har klart best effekt. Altså at det er den samme avdelingen og de samme behandlerne som ivaretar pasienten, om vedkommende sliter hovedsakelig med rusproblemer eller en psykisk lidelse. Men det har vært vanskelig å etablere slike behandlingsenheter. Og det kan skyldes både organisatoriske utfordringer, mangel på kompetanse og for markerte skott mellom profesjonen i helsevesenet. Selv om det er etablert enkelte behandlingsenheter for personer med samtidig rus og psykisk lidelse rundt om i landet, er dette mer et unntak enn en regel. Men siden 2008 er det imidlertid blitt opprettet oppsøkende team av ACT og FACT-team, som tilbyr behandling til personer som har vanskelig med å nytte seg til adresjonell behandling. De fleste i målgruppen har en alvorlig psykisk lidelse, og mange har også et problematisk forhold til rusmiddel. De fleste av disse teamene er etablert som et samarbeid mellom spesialisthelsetjenest og kommune, og legger til rette for behandling av både rusledelsen og den psykiske lidelsen. Og det finnes rundt 50 slike team rundt i Norge i dag. I tillegg er det nå mange kommuner som har omorganisert tilbud til denne pasientgruppen, og etablert egne ROP-enheter knyttet til omsorgstjenestene. Hva bør så sykepleiere og andre behandlere være oppmerksomme på? Når det gjelder selvmedisinering bør man være spesielt oppmerksom på at pasientene kan anvende rusmidler til å lindre symptomer på en psykisk lidelse. Og når helsepersonell kartlegger pasientens sykdom, er det nødvendig å spørre hver enkelt om deres bruk av rusmidler og hvilken funksjon bruken har. Det er like viktig å spørre om hvordan og hvorfor pasientene bruker rusmidler enn hvilket rusmidler de bruker. Videre trenger behandlere å motivere pasienter til å redusere rusmiddelbruken, og pasienter trenger hjelp til å håndtere både angst og depresjon. Ved behandling med andre psykotika bør behandlere nøye vurdere bivirkninger. Vi ser at noen personer med psykoserhildelser synes å ha bedre livskvalitet når de bruker rusmidler enn når de er avhavende. I noen grad kan det være best å jobbe sammen med pasienten for å minimere, snarere enn å eliminere rusmiddelbruken. Så tenker jeg at ved behandling av personer med innvandret bakgrunn og samtidig rus og psykisk lidelse, blir det ekstra viktig med integrert behandling. Dette fordi mange opplever stor grad av skamfølelse knyttet til sine problemer. De har en skepsis til det norske helsevesenet, og det vil være spesielt ugjenstig for dem å måtte oppsøke flere behandlingsinstitusjoner for å behandle ulike typer lidelser. Så i tråd med Progots i en doktorgradsavhandling, 
bør behandle i tillegg av en viss grad av multikulturell kompetanse og god kvalitet på tolketjenester.